Hey everybody, I'm Adam, you're not. Coming to you all the way from South Florida, Quiet Waters Park. As you can see, you're watching Trucker Josh. Like, subscribe, hit the notification, do whatever you like. Thank you very much, hope I pass the audition. <laughs> Good Monday morning, everybody. We're at the yard. It's already the afternoon and we need to get going right now. We have a load out in Ear Falls, Ontario. That's going down to Bemidji. And we gotta be there for tomorrow. We have to get that load off my trailer tomorrow because we have a load down in Iowa that's coming on back up to Canada that I have to deliver throughout this week yet. So we got a busy, busy couple of days. Not much time to talk. I'll give you a quick look at the trailer. 53 foot step deck. It's empty. We're loaded up, we're done on our pre-trip. Just about buckled in so we don't fall out. Let's go. And we're off. Got a load of lumber waiting for us. Eastbound. In Tontario area. For the last year, this was like a daily, daily route for me here as I was doing the Toulon and Arburg stuff, eh? Now we're going a little bit further. Having a little bit more fun. A little bit of a nicer truck too. Though I do like the old Pete, but needed a little bit of work. But what truck doesn't, right? This truck needs a bit of work too. The only trucks that don't need work are the brand new trucks and uh, <laughs> You almost gotta be a rich oil tycoon to be able to afford one of them. Monthly payments on a brand new truck can go like anywhere from four to five thousand dollars a month. And you gotta be running hard, like constant. Like 12, 13,000 miles a month just to make ends meet with a brand new truck. And then it's still in the shop quite often, or it can be. Because those new trucks have so much over engineering put into them. So many extra sensors that you don't need that they think would be convenient or handy or good to have. No, they're not good to have. They're actually quite annoying. <laughs> because they're always breaking, right? And then you gotta replace sensor after sensor after this, after that, plus all the stuff into the motor to make it compliant with the new truck stuff. It's a, it's a headache to have a brand new truck. I prefer the older trucks. This is a 2008. That's about the newest I would uh, wanna go. Sad to say that, right? Because I love trucks so much and it's just the, the way they built the new ones, they're just not very appealing and they seem to have more problems than, than solutions. You know, they fix one thing, but in the meantime, every, every problem they fix, they create two more. I don't know, I don't know. Just my thoughts on it. Look at all these purple flowers in the ditches here. I've never seen that before here in Manitoba. That's new. Is that some kind of invasive species or something? probably means the world's about to end. Quick, raise our taxes. Save us from the purple flowers. That's the only way. Gotta raise the taxes. We're on Trans Canada eastbound now, pointing our nose towards Ontario here, here, and that's the corner. The corner that came right before where that bear ran into me last week. I didn't hit it, it hit me. It was around this corner here and about, was it a mile up? when I doubled back to come and check on it, I turned around right here at this turn up, and I think it was a mile up, hit my uh, truck on the driver's side and bounced into the left, into the median there. I'm sure they've got it all cleaned up by now. Well, this is where it happened. It was pitch black at the time, right? Now staring straight at the road. And just about here, like in my corner of vision, right by my air cleaner here, I saw a shadow just come bolting towards the truck, almost like a ghost. It's a shadow. And all I heard was a little padunk. I knew right away, so I was like, oh no, something ran into me. If he would have been a 
a couple of seconds earlier, he would have hit the front of my truck, which would have caused a lot more damage. But he came, hit my, hit his head on my driver's side wheel with dead instantly. Flipped around, got himself caught up on my steps. Uh, he was definitely dead. Like, ripped open, kind of dead. So, uh, I think it was, it was in this, in this mile, this stretch. No damage to my truck. My wheel alignment is okay. My wheel balance is okay. So that's good. I was a little bit worried about that because you know if you hit something hits you hard on your on your steer axle, even if you hit a big pothole, it could knock your alignment out, or it could also uh, mess things up, bend your tire, like mess up your tire so that it's not balanced anymore. Here it is, right here, on the left here. That's where it was. Hit me right here. Boom! And there's all the mess right there. They cleaned them up already. Nothing I could do about it. Too bad. I was scared that it was a dog because I saw just a shadow run up to my truck, right? I was scared that it was a dog. That's why I doubled back right away. So you know me and dogs. I, I like them more than people. Double back and I was sort of relieved that it wasn't a dog, but at the same time I'm like, oh man, the poor guy. One bad life decision and look at you now, all over the highway, man. Not like we have a lack of bears in this area. We're not endangered or anything and uh, they're actually quite a danger and a nuisance to the residents living here. I have family that Extended family live in the area here and uh, a lot of campgrounds around here and they always have problems with these black bears. So a lot of them get relocated out further onto crown land away from population. They shouldn't be in this area anyway because stuff like this happens. You know, stuff like that happens. They Too many people here. We have so much wilderness up north. It's not like they have nowhere to live. They have like millions of square miles of habitat up north that are just untouched in northern Canada. It's beautiful up there. Untouched, undeveloped, lots of land up there for them. So very often they'll get relocated up there and you know, live a happy life. Uh, sometimes they wander down here and uh, you know, go and get themselves messed up on the side of a W900. I'm just glad it didn't damage my truck. Very glad, it could have been much worse. And I'm glad it was fast, you know, it's, he didn't suffer. It was definitely fast, like instant. So, is what it is. Oh, be careful there, bike. Okay, that's all right, that's all right. It's kind of worried if he would have like sputtered out or whatever in the lane here, or stalled or missed a gear. Risky. That's what life's all about, right? Living life on the edge. end of the rainbow. Looks like, cause I'm gonna go around that way, hoping to find it over there when I get to Ear Falls. Maybe it'll be a load of gold that I'm hauling. It's actually a double rainbow. I don't know if you can see it. It's not as bright right now. It's fading away a little bit now. But uh, before there was a bright rainbow there and then a rainbow above it, you had a double rainbow, double whammy. And this is the end of the line for Manitoba. Scale is closed. A closed scale is a good scale. All the other ones aren't nearly as good. We'll go past this. This is on the Manitoba side and then we'll cross into Ontario. And you immediately go to a two lane highway and you'll be on a two-lane highway all the way, almost to Toronto. 
two days of driving to get to the next part of the big, big part of civilization in Canada. This is Western Canada, all the population west of here. Northern Ontario is kind of like the buffer. <laughs> and then you get the corridor, you know, uh, from Windsor, Ontario, all the way up to Quebec City, where the majority of Canadians live. Here in Vermilion Bay, Ontario, stopping for a quick coffee. I don't have a lot of time. Then again, I never have a lot of time. I'm always in a rush. It's the name of the game. From here, we gotta go about two hours north yet. Maybe about two hours, hour and a half. And the shippers there, they actually load trucks 24 hours a day. They only stop for shift change for about a half hour, twice a day. So 23 hours a day, they load trucks. That's a shipper that I like. So this is their little town, town, what do you want to call it? I'd, I'd call it a sculpture, but I don't think it's real rocks. It looks like rocks, right? And here it says, Vermilion Bay, established 1909. I think it used to be a little trading post. Gas is kind of expensive here. So is diesel fuel. I don't understand why diesel fuel is so much more expensive than gasoline. Nice little store. Get live bait in there, tackle, all kinds of fishing supplies. Makes sense because fishing is a huge thing around here. So many little lakes. It's a great place to be a fisherman. inspection station is the best inspection station. That is how they should be. Ain't no one got time for that. Okay, how far up here? 100 kilometers or 60 miles this way. So not quite two hours like I said before. fuel limited services I fueled up in uh, Deacon's Corner on the east side of Winnipeg just like last week that way I don't got to worry about fueling up here or tomorrow I'll probably fuel up tomorrow afternoon or something I want to get loaded 
loaded tonight yet, and then I want to get all the way down to Fort Francis. That's right at the border. I have to wait till the morning to cross into the U.S. Uh, because we we gotta wait for paperwork to go through. They want to know who I am. They want to know what I'm hauling. They want to know where I'm going. They want to know where I'm from. All fair questions, I think. morning and I'm here in Dryden Ontario on my way down to Bemidji Minnesota with this lumber couldn't film at night because none of the footage ever turns out in the dark and also I got some pretty good lighting and in the yard there pretty much the only lighting I had was my load lamps didn't work out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue this vlog all the way down to Bemidji deliver this load we'll start tomorrow's there I gotta head down to Adele Iowa I believe for a reload but until then, this is what we're working with. A load of lumber, sitting at about 79,800 pounds. So max weights for the US. Got about four hours of driving down to Bemidji. And a little bit of a rush, of course. This truck needs a good polish again. Thanks. It's always a little bit wild the first day back out on the road, especially if we get going in the afternoon. We had stuff going on in the morning uh, had a whole bunch of stuff to get done so I left in the afternoon uh, they load all night in Ear Falls which is awesome but it also messes up my schedule then and that's my own fault I usually get on the schedule where I drive drive late I work the same amount of hours as everyone else if not maybe more I push myself pretty hard uh, within the law but I usually start later and later and I like to change that when I'm on the road so that I start earlier and end later just so that it works out better with uh, appointment times and stuff, right? But uh, it is what it is today. We're getting going from Dryden. Glad to have you aboard. It's day two of this trip already, but still on vlog, what, 2601. Yesterday's vlog, I said we were on vlog 2700. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. I, I have over 3,000 videos, but uh, this is vlog number 2601 since I started counting. I like to keep it confusing. Made myself a gourmet breakfast. Peanut butter and jelly. Got myself some gourmet coffee. Oh, that's some high quality gourmet air going into my system right now, releasing the brakes. Gonna roll down that window for some gourmet air. You say gourmet, I say gourmet. <laughs> All right, all right, let's just make sure our trailer's gonna come with us, eh? Let's keep an eye on our mirror there. Oh, oh, trailer's attached. This lumber's coming with us. We're gonna bring it down to Minnesota. Minnesota, let's go down to Minnesota. Oh, oh, oh. oh nice throaty growl first thing in the morning. Good truck, good truck. Why are you guys up here in close? You should be down in your spot. All right, look both ways, up and down. So we spent the night at Petro Pass. It was a very nice night. We're gonna have to book it now though. We don't have a lot of time to mess around. Straight there, going straight there. And hopefully no delays at the border. We 
we've got to go around here and then through town again past that paper plant. Remember that from last week? The smelly paper plant? People around here say it smells like money. That's how I feel about uh, diesel fuel and diesel fumes in the morning. Oh, everyone's all like, oh, it smells like diesel fumes. It's so bad. No, it smells like money. Always so strange you know people always stare at you like they've never seen a guy with a camera stuck on his head is that not very common or what it's very common in my area <laughs> This truck just loves to pull. Just feathering it up the hills. Red light, red light, that means stop. funny too. Huh. Here it is, the paper plant. A light flood of Dryden, I guess. It doesn't even smell that bad today. I guess the air is, uh, the air currents and the winds are taking the smell away. Having a good smell day, they use deodorant. They took my advice. Have you? <laughs> That's right where we stopped last time. day the sun's not shining but the air outside is just perfect not too hot <coughs> pardon me not too hot not cold just a nice cool breeze beautiful day the sun will probably come out later clouds don't look that thick well, you never know I'm not a weatherman Sometimes I feel like I know what's, what, what the weather's doing more than the weatherman. <laughs> Welcome to America. The United States of America. I gotta go this way. Gotta follow US 71. But I'm gonna have to wait for Mr. Fancy Toyota. There we go. Beautiful, wonderful. Minnesota, how you doing? This is Minnesota, right? Yes, Minnesota. International Falls, Minnesota. It's where the falls are international. Very nice, very nice. Well done, Minnesota, well done. Nice town, nice town. Oh, 
We got a jaywalker. Oh boy. I'll allow it. You get a free pass today, my friend. Looks like a friendly guy. See, even old Blue likes it, you hear? She went Psh. That means she likes your town. Oh, look, they even got a big bear. Look at that over there. Smokey. Oh, that's where Smokey Bear is from. Smokey says prevent wildfires. Well, you heard Smokey, guys. You heard him. Prevent those wildfires. Notice how all the streets are automatically just twice as wide. There. Here? No, I want to go straight here. This is Bemidji. Bemidji? Bemidji. Bemidji. Minnesota. We're just about there now. Arriving right on schedule. Very close, very close. They wanted me there before 4.30 and it's uh, 10 after three right now. I was hoping to be there at three o'clock, but I am still well before 4.30. Got about another three minutes to go. See, Minnesota is getting pretty happy with these roundabouts. Oh, no, never mind. Not a roundabout. Take it back. There was just the one. Okay. Just the one. This is where I want to turn, though. How sharp is this corner? I should be able to make it from this lane. Not a problem. Stop here on red. Nice, clear directions. I like that. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. So we're getting unloaded here. It's on the other side there now. I got all my straps put away. A couple more lifts. Another successful delivery. From here, like I said before, I have to run down to Adele. Adele, Iowa. Which is a little bit of a ways away from here. Let's see. Let's type in the address here. See what it says. Ah, it's one of those addresses that's pretty much like all numbers. Adele. There it is. All right, Karen, speak to me. What do you have to say, woman? Seven hundred. 79 kilometers. I don't know why she's not talking. Proceed to the highlighted route. Okay, so it's almost a full, it's, it's quite a ways. But it's a, it's a good load though, it's a good load. I agreed to go pick it up. And uh, the load on tomorrow, the 17th. Give receiver 24 hours notice. It's going to Lang Bank, Saskatchewan. Lang Bank. Where is that? Lang Bank. Lang Bank. Lang Bank. Maybe if I say it enough times, it'll sound normal. Lang Bank. Lang Bank. Lang Bank.
Okay, here we go. Yeah, Langbank. It literally has about six houses and a grain storage facility and a church and a co-op. And we'll continue this in tomorrow's video. I hope you tune in, subscribe so you don't miss it. Hit that bell so you don't miss it. Leave me a comment down below and I'll see you later.